Karen Smith, investigadora sudafricana, durante el seminario sobre los BRICS en la Cancillería Argentina para Claxo TV. Karen, uh, thank you. Thank the you. BRICS, in your view, are a counter power? They are. I think the fact that you, we talk about them as a South-South grouping sometimes, but I think the fact that Russia is a member of the grouping makes it clear that it's not just a South-South grouping, that it is in fact a counterweight or a counterpole to, to the West or to the US. To the West or the US, exactly? I th well, I think predominantly the US, the US and its allies. So, you know, those parts of the West that see themselves as aligning with the US when it comes to security issues, economic issues, etc. And it's in fact a counterpower, or is uh, it's on purpose a counterpower? Yeah, I mean it's wanting to be one. I don't think they've yet reached the ah, point. It's wanting to be, so it's on purpose. It's definitely on purpose. Yeah. Ah, okay. No, absolutely. Yeah. They all agree in that. They do. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. I mean, some of them are all the members. Some of them are more vocal about it than others. For um, example. Uh, I mean, Russia clearly because Russia, it has okay. more of a you know, combative attitude, I think, towards Your the West. He has uh, his uh, own agenda, exactly. yeah, of course. Yeah, whereas the others, you know, they have to be careful because they still have relationships with the US, trade relationships, for example, yeah. uh, you know, relatively good diplomatic e relationships. Even China. Exactly, absolutely. Even China, or, or in the first place, China, maybe. Yeah, but um, I think that's the nature of, you know, this grouping, that they, they feel that they're strong enough to be able to maintain those relations and yet say, we're not happy with the way things have been working until now and we want to change them. In which sense uh, they are not happy? In which issues, for example? Especially the way in which uh, global governance uh, is, is managed. So the fact that the rules are applied inconsistently and the rules are broken by the powerful states like the USA when it suits them. And so mm -hmm. there's a level of double standards that are involved. And of course, the fact that uh, these powers who think that they should be in the power seats as well, because they are now also important economically, politically, uh, the fact that they don't have, they don't feel that they have enough say in systems of global governance, especially the international economic uh, institutions. And which is the goal of China within the BRICS? I think China is interesting because the BRICS my perception is for yes. China, the BRICS is only one aspect of their foreign policy. It's uh -huh. it, the BRICS is not as important to China as perhaps it is to the smaller countries like South Africa and Brazil, yeah. uh, for whom it is a very important part. Um, but again, I think similar to Russia, China sees its BRICS allies as countries that it can rely on, um, not just to support its uh, economic projects, which is you know wanting to uh, have more power in, in global decision making, but also when it comes to the United Nations, for example. So um, in that case, you know, South Africa, rightly or wrongly, claims to represent Africa and mm -hmm. often speaks on behalf of Africa. And you know, the African vote is, is 54 votes in the UN. So that's important for China when it's, it needs uh, partners and allies in, in global governance issues. And for South Africa especially, which mm -hmm. is the purpose? I think there are a number of purposes. I think one of the main um, issues is, is prestige and status yeah. internationally. So the fact that we know part of this grouping, which is seen as quite an exclusive, you know, uh, <laughs> status oriented uh, mm -hmm. group, but also the way that the government has promoted it to the South African public is that it's going to lead to an increase in bilateral trade with the BRICS countries. Um, it's going to not just benefit South Africa, but it's also going to benefit the region and the continent. Um, so both economic, but I think also uh, politically uh, levels of prestige and also, of course, South Africa. Um, it's stated in our foreign policy that we'd like to see change in the form of global governance reform, but being a small power, we can't do it on our own. So I think, you know, uh, partnering with countries like China and, and, and India, and Brazil and, and Russia gives us more, there's, there's a bigger possibility of achieving our foreign policy aims. In the last answer, you said state-oriented uh, economy, no, not economy, states. Status, status. status. Yeah, states, okay. Yeah. That's, that's the main point, the main common point, uh, in your view? Amongst all the BRICS countries? Yes. I think status is a very important part of it because I think these countries have all been marginalized from uh, the systems of global governance. So I think one of the main things that they want is to be recognized as equals um, mm -hmm. and respected by the West. Um, and so they're both, all of them I think are driven by status and prestige. Is a different model than the model of the United States? Less state-oriented economies or policies? 
Um, oh, you mean in terms of their uh, economic policies? Exactly, and in terms of the intervention of the state in general. Social yes. policies, economic policies. No, absolutely. They're much more state oriented. I mean, of course, yeah. there are different levels of it as well, with China being of course, you know, yeah. a perfect example of state capitalism. Mm -hmm. So they all, uh, their, their economies are all capitalist, you know, so yes. there's different levels of state intervention. Yes. But I think they share um, an interest in increased state intervention, especially in terms of so social equality and social welfare issues. Mm -hmm. So very different from the US in that regard. Yeah. Okay. And uh, which is. The difference, because in, in what you are telling, uh, one can take the conclusion that other issues, democracy or the, word, the form of the, the, the kind of democracy, human rights, etc., 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 are not uh, the main points of, uh, of common points. Mm -hmm. They are not the mainstream of the BRICS. No. Is it okay? Absolutely not. I mean, in fact, those are the big, those are big dividing they factors. They are besides. They're I think they're factors that divide the BRICS because on the one hand you've got India, Brazil, South Africa who claim to promote human rights and democracy in their foreign policies and then mm -hmm. you have Russia and China yeah. who of course don't. Um, <laughs> so I think that's one of the issues of course that there's no agreement on. Um, and that's one of the areas where they're often criticized, where people say how can these countries work together if they disagree on such important issues. And what is your answer? My answer that's is politics. that, my answer is, yeah, I mean, in all groupings, there's going to be differences between uh, members. So I think they need to decide what are the things that we have in common, that we agree on, and work on uh, achieving those. And as they're doing at the moment, they're simply not talking about the, con the controversial issues like UN Security Council reform. Which is the, the future, of the likely future of the bank? It's an, it has a, a political role, it will have an economic role, which kind of role can you... I think it will have both. I mean, both. it's still, you know, the details are still being uh, worked out and negotiated, but I think it's, it's, it's an important signal that the BRICS are moving beyond just being a kind of loose informal grouping because they're going to be, you know, institutionalizing, so they're, they're creating this bank. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a, it's a political statement in that they're saying, if you don't want to give us more power in the existing structures like the World Bank, then we will create our own structures. Um, so in that sense, it's, it's a political sign. But of course, also, you know, economically, it's, it's sending the message that uh, the kinds of projects in the developing world that the World Bank doesn't want to fund, we will fund them. What do you know in your research about the reaction in the United States of mm, the government or the think tanks? Mm -hmm. So interestingly, in front of the BRICS. yeah, I think they've, the U.S. has been trying to downplay the importance of the BRICS by saying, <laughs> you know, don't worry about too much about it. Uh, you know, the U.S. But is but here to they stay. They really think that? I don't think so, ah, because okay. if you do look at the research that's happening in think tanks and, and academic institutions, there is a lot of interest in it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a bit contradictory if they mm -hmm. say the BRICS are not important and they're not going to be a and challenge. They are, they are seen as an enemy or a challenge? <laughs> I think it depends on you know who you speak to in the U.S. I think it's more of a challenge, not not so much an enemy. And I think what the U.S. is trying to do is think about how can we uh, incorporate these these powers. In other words, how can we kind of keep them happy ah, um, okay. so that they don't pose too much <laughs> of a, an aggressive yeah. challenge? Yeah, a sham policy. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Karen. Thank you for your time. Karen Smith, the South Africa and Claxo TV. Mm.